Today we're going to use a 1300 euro 3D scanner and a 1000 euro 3D printer to fix a compost bin that cost all of 19 euros. Why am I doing this? Because it's a great showcase for practical 3D printing. I get to use my Einscan SE 3D scanner and you you can think of this as like a mini review impressions kind of video um, and the thing you got to remember is this process doesn't just work on like five cent injection molded parts you can also use this to make parts that you just cannot buy anymore um, for example someone once made a um, clip for his BMW hat rack um, you know one of the extendable ones and you couldn't buy that end piece by itself so essentially it saved him a thousand bucks because he didn't have to buy the entire unit as a replacement so just keep that in mind with this process and well the other reason why I'm making this video and why I'm publishing this now is because I, I frankly I've been traveling too much uh, ever since the start of this year I've been doing like one trip a month and that has sucked out like two or three weeks out of each month of my time so I didn't really have that much time to make regular content and there's only so much show floor and interview content that I can and want to publish now this video isn't exactly what I want this channel to be at yet but that stuff is going to come soon so stay tuned and yeah for now let's get fixing on that compost bin so this glorious compost bin is what we're going to be fixing today now obviously this is not a spectacular bin like this is all relatively flimsy plastic but the nice thing about it is it's all modular like for example the top here used to be two parts for shipping these clip together right here all these side panels just snap together at the corners and the nice thing about this lid is where our uh, fix comes in there you go, is that this entire thing is modular. So on the one side you have the clip right here that keeps the lid shut, and on the other side you have the same mounting points. One has the hinge on it, the hinge bolt basically, and the other one is missing. And also this part right here is broken off, so we're gonna flip these sides and use the pins over here. But we also need to make another one of these uh, hinges right here. So looking at this hinge part, it's obviously a very simple part. You could just take some calipers to it, uh, and model it up like that uh, so this is an original injection molded part so there, there's not really much complexity to it but what I'm going to try today is actually use my 3d scanner the Einscan SE and uh, scan this and create a one-to-one -one carbon copy from it and this as you can see is injection molded from PP but I will be using an ABS polycarbonate blend to make a exact replica from this Okay, so that is the Einskin SE assembled. Now I've not used this for a while, so I might actually need to use the calibration pattern. This just goes onto the turntable like so. That sits on here and then it does its auto calibration. You rotate this a few times. It's really quick and simple to do and really you don't need to do it all that often. And then we're basically ready to start scanning our part that we want to replace. Now this is a gray injection molded part and it has like a semi-gloss finish. You can probably see that right here. It's like this if I put it here, you can see it. It's like this relatively gloss-free surface finish, which should be okay for scanning, but I'm actually not sure if it's gonna pick up all the little details on there properly. So if it does not do that, I will need to spray paint it white. But yeah, let's try as is, and then we can always go in and fix it. There we go. So the Einscan is giving us a few different scan options here. The first one is auto scan, which is exactly what we have set up here with the scanner unit right there and the turntable attached to it with the included bracket. But you can also use fixed scan uh, where you just put this scanner head on a tripod and then move that around your object, just like you would do with photogrammetry using a simple camera. But because our object actually is small enough to fit on the turntable and we can move this to the turntable and don't have to move Move the scanner to our scanned object we're going to use the auto scan and hit next right here new project 
Next, we have the options of doing a non-textured scan. So it shows you the icon right there, which is just a shell model and STL essentially, or you can do a colored, a textured scan. Because in our case, our object has pretty much no texture uh, and we also don't need any texture we're going to go with a non-textured scan and you can see the preview image of what the scanner is seeing right there so first thing you do is you adjust your brightness and what you want is in that corner right there you want your object to be visible right now it is very dark you can see it right there it is very dark and black so we're going to go with dark difficult to scan and you can see it bumps up the exposure right there and it's going to be able to see a bit more of our object now again I mentioned this if this is too dark we might need to spray paint it with a gray or a white but for now let's just try this and there it goes you can see all the different light patterns uh, it's shooting out you can actually see them over there on the wall so it's actually projecting all these different patterns onto our scanned object and by doing that it makes sense of what each camera inside the scanner unit sees while it's doing that so the way the scanner works is actually pretty darn cool so it's got a little LED projector right in the center right there um, and that is shooting out those structured light patterns now there we go. Now to actually pick up anything from that structured projection, it has a pair of cameras, one there and another one right there. And those basically pick up an offset image from what the center projector is projecting onto our scan area right there. And as it keeps turning around, the software starts assembling a 3D model from those two camera views. As you can see right up here, there is a very low contrast left in that scene, but we're just gonna try it and see how it goes. What actually might also help is uh, just turning off some lights in here or all the lights. Wow, that's certainly gonna look nice. So we're giving this a bit more contrast to look at. Let's see if that is actually picking up more. Does not look like it but at least there's less stray light around the object bouncing off of it. So our first round of scanning is done. Uh, so far we have an object, but if I look at this, you can see a few things. First of all, right there, this is supposed to be square. This as well, this is all skewed. So I'm pretty sure I should have just run the calibration before running the first scan. And also while scanning, I noticed that um, we weren't getting a lot of detail. For example, right here at the front on the um, pivot axis basically here, um, we're missing a lot of detail where the scanner should have picked up some. Uh, so this I really attribute to this being too dark and too shiny. So I am gonna hit this with some primer, calibrate the scanner, and then we can go again and hopefully get some really nice and crisp scans because I know this little scanner can do some really amazing stuff. So after doing math for what felt like forever, the Einscan software is done calibrating itself. Time to put some spray paint with some primer onto this part. Now, this is polypropylene. This is not gonna stick very well to it, but at least it's gonna create like a, a light dusting on top. I know you're gonna be able to wipe it off and all, but all we're going for is some optical diffusion on this part right here. So let's go ahead and try how well that goes. All I'm using here is some 499 regular primer, nothing special, nothing really good. I don't want to waste good stuff uh, that's not going to stick anyways. Yeah, I would say that is coming out better than I was hoping for. Just gonna get this little corner right here. Okay, so that actually came out nicer than what I was hoping for. Um, now, of course, I went into this knowing that it wouldn't stick, and you can see that on this corner right here, where I think I pressed down with the glove too hard. We might actually see this pop up in the 3D scan as texture, but 
in general very well covered very gray in professional settings you'd have something like a cornstarch or a powder pen that you just brush this onto with or even a cornstarch spray that wipes off really easily in my case like this is the best thing that i had it's nice even it's gray it's non-gloss uh and also it's cheap and i had it here this part doesn't need to be its original texture ever again so this is perfectly fine for me but if you're doing something like this uh where you can't destroy or alter your scan part there are other options available so I open up the unscan software again and you can already see right up here where the, all this red is. Everything that's red is overexposed so that is too bright. So the dark difficult to scan setting is not okay anymore. Let's go with medium and you can see that's a lot better. You can of course change all this once you've configured it once. Um, and there's also a slider here that apparently isn't touchscreen slidey and that changes it to be you know in between these settings and that actually looks really really good and you can see it has the uh, projector on full blast so this is like the maximum brightness it's ever going to get if the projector was off if i was blocking this out and maybe not block out the cameras uh, you can see how much darker this actually gets right there what i also did is i knocked down these scans per full turntable revolution down to 10 that's going to make the scan go a lot faster and the cool thing is you can just rotate this around you can put this into different orientations and the software is automatically going to stitch all those together and figure out how they fit you don't have to input anything how you rotated it uh, you just rotate it you let it scan and the software does the rest so if you only get 10 detailed scans in each rotation we can make up for that by giving it extra perspectives and i think that's going to result in a much more robust scan overall there's the very first perspective look at that that is so much nicer that just has so much more detail all right so that is the first round of scans done so this is only from this perspective and look at that look at that mesh like that looks so good like you can see the recycling symbol in all its glory you can see into every little nook and, and uh what is it crevice yeah uh but of course like the top and bottom sides which the uh cameras and the scanner really don't cover uh those are still not in the scan so there are still holes in here you can look straight through the part this way so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this like that so the scanner will be able to see the sides we're going to accept this scan right here and then we're just going to start another one and it's automatically going to stitch it together okay second scan done and this is looking glorious and it's covering those surfaces pretty well on the outside and to a certain extent also on the inside everything that is yellow in here is where you're looking into the model so this is basically this surface but from the other side so we're gonna hit accept we're gonna see how well this uh, stitches it together what surfaces we're still missing and then we're just gonna run another scan to cover those Okay, so right now it's looking like the inside surface is right here. This bottom surface and this opposite surface right there aren't really picking up on the scans. And I think that is very simple because they're at a very shallow angle. Uh, they're basically parallel with the turntable surface. So what I'm gonna try and do is actually take this part and prop it up ever so slightly. Um, you can actually see wherever the light from the projector still touches the object, it's still gonna pick up. So I'm just gonna try and angle it ever so slightly and see if that scans better so for that you can use some blue tech or something uh, I'm just gonna use some uh, gaff tape and uh, roll it up and uh, prop it up gaff tape is like so good for so many things and honestly if you don't have any gaff tape get some now this stuff is so much better than duct tape highly recommend it And is it gonna pick up? Show me, yes. There we go, there's our inside surface right there. So, okay, so we've scanned this, the scan is looking glorious, but of course it also picked up the gaff tape right there uh, where we used it to prop stuff up. So for that, we have those blinking edit tools right down there. Let's actually try that. Let's prop it up like this and say shift. Yeah, oh, I'm horrible at this. Okay, we got a bit of the edge up front there, so that's that doesn't matter. And let's say delete. Nice! 
propped up gaff tape is gone. Let's hit okay and this is gonna merge it with the rest of the models and hopefully give us this inner surface right there. Uh, uh, no, not quite. This is not what I wanted. Okay, so there is a manual align tool right there where you pick common points between the two and I believe it's gonna do the rest for you. Shift and left mouse. There we go. There's the first one and there's the second one. And then let's do the right corner, um, for example, on here. This point right there. Cool. Okay, so I think this might be good enough to at least try to mesh it. So right now, if you look at this, uh, this is still only points. Like these are all individual 3D points and you could not print this if you wanted to. This is not a model that your slice is gonna understand. So what we need to do is we need to turn it into a mesh. We need a watertight model. We really don't need that much detail, but I feel like low detail looking at the preview, that might be a bit, you know, too little detail. So let's try the medium detail right there. Uh, that is actually gonna process for a bit. I know this process is rather slow if you have a really complex model. Uh, with this one, with the medium detail one, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how long it goes. Um, and you can always redo this process. You can still add on to the original scans. You can still do more uh, orientations if you're still missing bits, but we're gonna get a preview of the 3D model in a second and we're just gonna go from there. Okay, so this mesh conversion was pretty successful. We've got, let's see, post simplification, we have five million <laughs> vertices, five million of them. Uh, that's too many, so we're gonna do uh, at least a simplification. But before we do that, let's check out how well this model turned out. So first of all, I mean, the texture on this, the, the detail on this is absolutely fantastic. The only problem is like in here, it starts falling apart. Um, back here, these blobs is where uh, the algorithm really tries to make this waterproof and watertight. Over here, it starts streaming up details that were not there and here it even created a hole in the mesh. So that unfortunately is not what we we're going for. So I'm gonna have to add at least one more scan to this uh, to fill up those areas back there. And I think I know just how to do that. It's been like 15 minutes of this thing post-processing. But as you can see, this is a quad-core CPU. It's not really using the resources I'm giving it. Yet still it's taking really long for all these little steps. I just want to get one more scan started and done. Come on, can't be that hard. Okay, 40 scans for this one revolution. That should really pick up the details right in there. See how the light is shining in there? That should pick up everything beautifully. Let's go. Look at that, beautiful, wow, what is going on? There we go. I was gonna say this looks beautiful. I guess it still does. Nice, okay, that is looking a lot crisper. Uh, let's see if we can mesh this. This time, let's try watertight, let's do low detail. We really didn't need all that detail we got last time. And hopefully that's gonna speed up the process a tiny bit. Ha! Success, look at this, we got all the ribs in here, maybe except for this one, but uh, whatever. I'm gonna call this good enough to print. Uh, simplification, uh, we got two million polygons still. Two million, that is still way too much. So let's actually bump that down to like 1%. 1% should be way more than enough still for this model. Okay, now you can see some polygons on here, but like in general, I think this is pretty much the perfect amount of polygons for a functional print like this. You don't need more. Anything more than this is just going to slow down the print and the slicers. So yeah, I guess all that's left now is to print this thing. All right, save. 
All right, so here's the file loaded up in uh, Prusa Slickvr, which is what I'm going to be printing this with. But the problem is, the scan is kind of randomly oriented, and Slickvr doesn't really have any good tools to uh, to rotate this. So I'm just going to take it into Cura instead and rotate it there, and then export it back as an STL and load that up in Slickvr. That is good enough for now. I'm gonna be printing this with supports anyways, so it doesn't really matter that it's perfect. I just want the layers to be aligned along this line where the maximum force is gonna come through from the hinge axle basically uh, up until this part right here. And that I think is gonna work out pretty well. There you go, that is looking much, much better. This can go, support material, generate, yes. And there we go, that is looking very decent, very usable. Save, let's go. In case you're wondering why my Mark III bed looks so uh, ugly, this is just glue stick this is literally just glue stick on top of the pi uh, i put it on there to protect my uh, pi surface and it sticks wonderfully for the pc abs that we're going to be using so this is what we're going to be printing with this is the uh, a printer pro pc abs uh, it's a very nice material it is black so it is somewhat uv resistant um, and of course being a pc abs it is temperature resistant and i think the pc component in it kind of makes it a bit more robust than just the abs and the layers stick a lot better There we go. Print is done. Check it out. I mean, opening up that box is like opening up that briefcase in Pulp Fiction every single time to me. All right, so here is the original part and here is the copied 3D printed part. And I gotta say, these look very, very good. Sizing wise, like if I just put these two together like this, this is perfect. Like this is sitting flush both directions. Uh, height wise, let's see, uh, height is also spot on. Like if you, if you prop these up against each other, this is also spot on. You can even see like the small bevels on the edges right there where the original has some bevels uh, those transferred over to the 3d printed part as well which is i think fantastic so let's get the support material off of this one this should come off relatively easily and yeah go and try it out and see how well it fits <laughs> all right so here we are these two parts time to do a test fit Check this out. All right, so here's the original spray painted part right there. It's actually looser than the copy 3D printed part, which is great. So this should really last a long time. And I mean, this is just as solid as it gets for, you know, an injection molded flimsy plastic uh, lid. The only thing we have to do is flip this part around, flip the hitch, Get that over here and we can put it back together. And again, here's the original right there and the copied one. And yeah, they fit just the same. Yep, even holds up the lid. That's a successful fix, I'd say. As always, I hope you found this video interesting, educational, entertaining, whatever you watch these for. Again, keep in mind, regular content is going to resume soon, so stay tuned for that. Until then, I want to take a second to thank all my awesome patrons for your support. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Um, in particular, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to read these off. Uh, in particular, Neil Youngberg, Woody Boyd, JB, Adam Kickham, Jeffrey Nikolajic, Fitchid, Andrea Matho, Guni W, uh, Remco Cuts, Philip Gock, Luke Ingerman, Matthew Bird, 3D Passion, Brian Raker, Bobby CC Wong, Dexter Gillette, Marek Serra, Andy Ferris, Sven Miller, Michael McGee, 
Francisco Peebles, Christopher Day, James C. Foley, Jonathan Marlin, Robin Monaki, Paul Arden, Phil Struder, Hussein Karathas, and Joel Telling. Thank you all so much. If you want to become part of the awesome crowd that makes this happen, head over to Patreon to support the channel with just a dollar or two per month. Um, but in either case, if you're not subscribed, get subscribed and check out these two other videos that you could be watching right now. And yeah, thank you for watching this one. I will see you in the next one.